Hey everybody, um, I'm going to do a commentary on Jars of Clay's Much Afraid record. Um, this, uh, let me start with the uh, cover. Here's the artwork if you don't remember. I'm sure the fans who are watching, yeah, you guys remember, but uh, there's the front cover and the back. This is the sheet music book. Of course, I've taken them all apart and put them back together for, for my purposes, creative purposes, um, um, music making purposes. Um, we'll just go down the track list from the beginning to end and talk about the songs. Um, the uh, first track, Being Overjoyed, Overjoyed's, my journey with Overjoyed was that um, what you needed to know is that the chord names were right, but the chord positions in the book were wrong. Um, the first position chord here, the is actually supposed to be um, and uh, how I figured that out was actually of all bands to be that might make, make some of the fans laugh would be the band Creed. Um, I was at my buddy John Santel's house, we were listening to Creed, it was the very first track from the very first record, the first song, the first record on that, that album, um, where they're going, they're going, um, Something basically like that, and that's how I figured out that riff from that song, because all the guys were listening to it, and, and I was getting to the point where I was starting to be able to hear things without needing books and things. I was just getting around to that, and I figured out that riff, and then I thought, hmm, that sounds familiar, and I thought... <laughs> I was like, hey, that's the overfraid, overfraid. That's the overjoyed chord. So I started figuring that out. I mean, I can let my A string be open, or I can mute it and have and be happy with. Technically a G, but anyway, if I want to hit that A minor correctly, or I can let the bass player play the low A note, and it's there, and it's fine. If I'm playing with a group. Um, so anyway, I figured that out. I was like, oh, okay. And then, um, so I, I started there. That was the first thing. The first thing about the book that drove me nuts about it is that it had the right names but the wrong shapes. Um... And there's still a few nuances about it that still throw me off. Um, like the A minor slash E, I guess. I would um, just mute the, the fifth string and let the sixth string be open. Or I could just let, again, that's something where I could let the bass player take over, and that's usually what I did when I played with a group live at my church. Um, which I did get the opportunity to play this one uh, quite a few times, which was lucky and awesome. Um, so I wrestled with it until I figured it out. Um, so, Overjoyed was a challenge. Um, the choruses um, were, you know, difficult until I figured out a magic chord shape. I could call it a magic chord shape. If it's how the band plays it, I'm still not sure. I would never watched the guys carefully enough to really see, but um, when I had the, the, I did go to a lot of shows and um, almost every record tour I went to up until, I think, the 11th hour, and then I missed a couple, and then I got back with them on, uh, what was it, um, I even missed Good Monsters, <laughs> it was, I think it might have been after Good Monsters, I started, I started making out shows again, things happened, I went to, I don't know, school, and I had my first kid, child, and, you know, things happened, um, but anyway, um, but we were, I played the church band for 15 years, and I was still doing that, so that helped me continue to explore Jarvis' music that way. Um, and I was still buying the records and listening, so I was doing that much. Um, but 
but the chord shape, this chord shape, this. Because when I started, again, I was following the book, what the book recommended. Um, so I was doing... I think I was because that G sharp is so hard to go. And I was playing the chorus that way, and that worked, and it still works well enough. And I had a good praise band around me that filled in what needed filling in and made it sound good. We, we enjoyed playing that song. My me like guitarist in my band, Ken Postel, hey Ken if you're watching, um, played, you know, played it great and played a good, just a good fit for that song, I think. Um, but when I figured out how to do this, So I'm not going to go into the explanation too much. Um, that really opened up the song even more for me. And, it, and you know, just having that shape, just slide, you just hold the shape and slide it up and down on that slight change for that um, E with G and the G sharp in the bass made it made it so much easier to play. So that song that song got better and better over time. So that was great. Um, and you know, it's a good song. It's got good energy. Um, it's good. It's got enough of a rock to it, you know. It's definitely, you know, Jars rocks it out when they play it. And I even got to the point where I could play the solo. And there's a video for the solo. There's a video for the rhythm parts um, to check out there. And I think it's to the point where I was starting to do this. So you're getting the best version of it, I think, in that video. And I will, if it's not there, I'll change it and or put a 2.0 video up for that. Um, so that was overjoyed. Um, it got a lot of attention, so it got worked out a lot and got better. Um, fade to Gray, um, it got a few attempts at church but it didn't really, um, it got, I mean I learned to put a capo on the third fret and that helped with the chording. Um, again the book always gave you the first position uh, chords, it gave you the right chord names but you really needed to know more about how a capo works and things or at least for me, I did to unlock the songs and really make them easier to play. Um, I've got a video. I think I've got videos for all the all the songs from Much Afraid of at this point. So um, you can watch those um, for that. But I, I think the basic, the big thing for Fade to Gray was putting a capo on the third fret and maneuvering the chords that way uh, helped. Um, T and Sympathy, actually T and Sympathy was one of the, I really went after that song almost after the rec record came out and I was still learning guitar and it, still, it had, it was in G, so that helped a lot. The fact that it was in G major um, helped me. So I latched onto that song pretty quick. Um, you know, just the... Sympathy got me playing that chord, and I used that in a lot of the other stuff. I learned how to play in other songs that I started playing with the praise band, and all my learning that that chord became important to me. Um, and it led to other things. And was it a G six or something, or some kind of sixth chord? Um, so that was that was one where in you know it didn't 
can't remember if there are bar chords in that. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember things. Um, but, um, yeah, T and Cynthia, I remember sitting down. Danny Emmons and I were trying to play that. Danny, hey Danny, again. Uh, that was when he had the book and I had the book and we were both had our own copies of it and we were trying to play it. And That one was a good one for me for where I was at with guitar at the time. Um, so, that was good. Um, uh, crazy Times. Crazy Times, yeah, it's history. It was funny. Me and my buddy John Sintel were sitting in like his basement, which was actually a really nice basement. It has looked like a living room, uh, underground living room with a pool table, I remember, and the big screen TV, and the first time I ever played Castlevania Symphony of the Night, video game memory, uh, was down there, and how that game was like, how do you play this, and then from there, eventually, I did play the game all the way through, and got to appreciate it for its story, and its music, and its gameplay, and it revolutionizing the uh, Metroidvania thing, anyway, that was kind of a tangent, but that's how that went. But we also made a lot of music memories down there, too. And when we would play Crazy Times, we followed the book. You know, we went with... I haven't played it that way in long enough for I can't play it that way anymore, almost. And then the chord goes... to do it that way, um, the way that the book, you know, both shapes, because I didn't know anything, you know, it was like, give me, you know, I go by what it says, or I don't play the song, was how it was, so that's what I did, I went by that, and later on, when I learned more, that I learned that a C major 7 becomes a D, when you put a capo on the second fret, it finally became, it finally turned into... <laughs> quite sound right and I and then I somehow one day stumbled on this chord. to be able to figure out key changes and be able to do that and play that that way. And that was, I think it was pretty much 90% of the way Jars actually plays it, the way Matt Odemark actually does it on the acoustic rhythm part. Um, so that was big and very important, and I felt very proud of myself for getting to that level with that song. Again, that's one where I didn't, you know, I was, on, I was at the Bubble Maker's Dream Tour, and I should have, watched, well, should have been watching Matt the whole time, and I wasn't. Because I didn't, I just enjoyed the show more. I just enjoyed the music um, more, which is probably better, better than trying to concentrate on what one guy was doing during the whole performance. Um, I remember Steve Mason's pedal went out and he couldn't play the solo on Crazy Times. Um, the band started out with uh, them like in a little intimate. They're very close to each other and just two guitars and and and. Uh, uh, Charlie playing his keyboard like the keyboard he had and that's how the, the band was when they first record that's how they started it and then then Charlie goes and sits down with a nice organ and Steve's playing his nice Les Paul guitar and um, Matt's playing the nice Taylor acoustic or whatever and uh, you know the band sounded amazing and it was a really cool night and there's actually a recording of their version of um, Liquid, that the remix they did there from Dayton, Ohio, on the Stringtown uh, record, which is cool. It's like, I was at that show. That's great. I was there um, when they did that, so that was awesome. Um, but anyway, yeah, crazy times. So there's some crazy times memories uh, that I can that I have to share, my own personal memories of that song and learning how to play it and everything. But yeah, I did finally figure out the that, and, and that was big. Oops. That's the riff. 
that's the riff from the seatbelt tuba uh, mini record they did. I even went so far as to try to figure that out. <laughs> and it's not exactly what it was, and they were just fiddling around when they made it. And that's cool. You know, it was fun that I got to the level where I could figure out even what the fiddling was. <laughs> Some of the fiddling stuff that went on. Um, so yeah, uh, Frail. Frail was the song I had to learn how to play. I had to know that song. Um, and I don't, I, I found somebody who did good tutorials where they show you what's going on with this hand and they show you what's going on with this hand. And I put his two videos in my, in my playlist for that and didn't bother to make a tutorial for Frail because that, I watched that video enough to know those were good and that was what, that was as good or better than what I would have done. So the world didn't need me to make a video for that because someone else already had. But I included, it's included in my Much Afraid uh, tutorial videos playlist and you can check it out and watch it. But yeah, that song was very important because I liked it. I just fell in love with it. And I brought it to my vocal teacher who helped me somewhat work out the piano notes because I really couldn't read music even, it's even less music literate than I am now, which I still am very literate. Um, and working out how the notes worked, um, like I, I plucked it a certain way, and she said, "Oh, you're you're you've you're doing it a little bit out of order from how it's written." And she helped me, you know, do that, fine tune that from what I did. But I, I had I really liked the Crazy Times Maxi single because it had the demo version of Frail on it, so and there were no vocals, so I could just hear the guitar. Although it's it it, it varies somewhat from. Uh, the final version that ended up on Much Afraid, but you could just hear the guitar. So that was awesome. Um, and uh, I could just, I just sat there and listened to it over and over and note for note, pull, put it together slowly and eventually was able to, you know, I can at least prove that I still, and it's been long enough to where... Seven. I'm like, no, it's not. It's, and that must have to do with it making it more piano friendly, and that's why it's in minor seventh instead of a suspended seventh, I guess. Um, I'm still, you know, like I said, theory illiterate. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I frail was. I was super proud of myself for figuring out frail, um, and. Uh, I, just, I was getting some vocal lessons, and I remember bringing it to Marsha Wagon, and she helped me figure it out um, there with the guitar. We were working on me playing and singing at the same time, um, and I didn't take those lessons as seriously as I should have either. <laughs> um, I at least try to pay attention to the way I breathe. I'll try to breathe in, sucking in, in a good amount of air first before I start singing, um, and that's about as far as the vocal thing went. I didn't do the breathing exercises and practice and really build my diaphragm like I should and stuff like that. But anyway, um, yeah, so that was frail. Um, and then when the, oh, well, what else? When the uh, Furthermore version came out and they play that sort of jazzier version of it and that you just capo on the third fret. Those were, those were those days for sure. Um, it did work. It does translate to jazz, okay, a jazzy, softer, loungy version of it. Um, 
without losing its reverence. You know, they did a good job with it. Um, Jars did a good job with that, in my opinion. Um, so, anything else to say about Frail? Um, and how it's written on the first album cover, but it's not on the record at all, and I guess it may have been on the uh, Frail demo uh, that I never had a copy of till uh, the Jars of Clay Interactive thing came out, and even then it wasn't on the Jars of Clay Interactive thing. Um, so, yeah. Um, I think that's all I have to say about Frail. Um, oh, we tried to play it at a high school uh, talent show, and we didn't practice it very well the night before, and it didn't come out well, and we really didn't, we just, it didn't go well. <laughs> John Sintel, I remember that. Um, uh, and, and then they unplugged us, I think. Uh, I think they literally hit the breaker switch, and they turned off my amp, because John couldn't hear me, I couldn't hear me, my amp went out. And I don't think it was the amp's fault, I think they honestly turned us off. <laughs> they were trying to get us off stage because we were trying to play of all songs we were trying to play free bird <laughs> and john had worked on the solo and i had gotten the rhythm part pretty tight and all that uh, can i even still play that let's see um let's see it was a uh... what I did and I had to play that over and over and over and over and my fingers hurt a lot from it and uh, John played the solo and just kept going and we just played till we dropped or something or they basically the lady came up the stage and good job guys and got us off stage <laughs> so that's how that went um, all high school talent shows were train wrecks <laughs> unfortunately um, that I played at we there basically didn't go too well. Five Candles, you were there. Um, I think Ken Postel pushed. He wanted to do that song, so I learned it because he wanted to do it. Um, I have, uh, like I said, I have tutorial videos for all the uh, songs from this uh, from this record, so you can watch all, all, all the big explanations are there. Um, and this is one. It's again the Church Band helped me polish it and get it better and better um, and it sounds pretty good these days um, it sounds I feel like I'm playing almost as good as it was on the rec on the record excuse me um, so that's great um, and check out that tutorial um, way down um, way down I played at my church once solo by myself um, in front of the congregation for a mess, part of the message it somehow fit what was going on that day, so I played it. I just remember playing it solo. I remember it sounds, it's it's the same chord. Uh, it's pretty much chord for chord. It's the same as 4-7. Um, Jars admitted it, that they recycled it. Um, but it worked. Um, and I have a tutorial of it there to check out. Um, and that's one that was kind of easy to latch on to. church and made the tutorial and that's about you know I was at that point I was I the big I think the big exciting chord might have been the it's figuring out the F sharp with the, the first and second the E and B strings open and 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 the and maybe learning worlds apart helped me unlock um, way down and I followed the book too and you know looked at the chords and variated what they wrote a little, what they offered a little bit, and found something that sounded closer to what actually happened, and I'm pretty happy with that these days, if um, I had to ever cover it again. Um, so, um, the portrait of Apollo, the portrait of an apology, 
That was another one I think where the cords were open and easy. They weren't bar chords. I think I early on I tended to choose songs that didn't have bar chords because I didn't like them. <laughs> so that was. Um, can't quite remember what the book offered, but I knew this sounded, it was close enough, or I think it might have been. So what the book offered was close enough to where I could piece together the rest and play it, I think, almost exactly like Jars did. So that was good. Um, I was able to figure that out and, and work with that and, and that's one of those, or another earlier song that I figured out that I was proud of for figuring out as far as I did. And I think I got into the open string thing, that, leaving my high, two high strings open. That's uh, became a, a, a staple with my playing um, as a rhythm acoustic player, especially in the church band. And as contemporary music moved on, there were some songs we played where that that there was a formula I could repeat over and over with other songs and get away with, it seemed like, um, <laughs> as time went on. Um, and I think Portrait of Apology would help me do that. The, uh, first and second strings, and I was, you know, the chord, I think they offer in a straight F, and I was like, or they don't, and they actually give you the, the, the real actual guitar chord from the record on there to play, so that was cool, and I got through Portrait of Apology. Truce, I never really, Truce I stayed away from, because the chords were weird, and um, I think... I can't even remember the tutorial. I did finally did a tutorial. I finally sat down with it and finally wrestled with it, and and got some version of it out. And it, there's a video, and I myself am going to have to rewatch it because I don't remember how I figured that song out. Um, much afraid. Um, I think it was one. That was one where the chords in the book were pretty darn close to what actually happened. So I enjoyed that song. And the nuance, there were just a few nuances to work out, I think, and I, most part, did that. And there's the tutorials there. Um, I think we cover it once or twice in with the praise band, but not very much, which was a shame because I really liked that song. I thought it was maybe it could have made a good communion song. We we did special songs when, when communion was played, soft songs that are really emotional and we're supposed to put you in the mood for communion and receiving the elements and all that and much afraid's a decent song for that I think. Um and then him, him was a big deal um for a while before I really understood capoing and, and things or maybe I just I've honestly got lucky one day with that one um because I didn't watch again I didn't watch the band close enough to see what was going on with that song. And even if you do, it's still a little confusing because the way that it, the guitars land, it's, it's not like they're sunk up with each other. They're a little bit, there's a little bit of a play that happens between the two acoustic guitars. Um, so, which makes it neater to listen to. Um, I just, you know, I, I f have my one guitar version of it. It's just, um, when I started, it was... Capo 5. This was a big deal. Capo 5, your G chord becomes a C. Um, and then I figured out.
played that one a lot of times at church because there was a lady who kept asking us to play it over. Um, Nancy wanted us to play it over and over, and we did. And so that song, that was probably a, another reason why that song got to the level it did is because the church band kept pushing me to play it and figure it out and get better at it. And when I figured out the capo thing, that was the big day with him. Um, and that was great. Um, so... But yeah, um, and of course tutorial is there to uh, teach you what I figured out there. Um, so yeah, but that's uh, that's a lot of what happened there. Um, and the coffee song um, that was on uh, where'd my pick go? The coffee song that was on the seatbelt tuba. I still try to play something. <laughs> Still a cool song. Um, let's see. No, yeah, you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, the coffee song still cool. That's one we should have played at church. I'm sorry we never played that one. <laughs> All the coffee and donuts that we served every Sunday, or we still they still serve there. Um, yeah, I'd be well, I'd be starting with the coffee song just for fun, just once or so. <laughs> um, I should do a tutorial for that. I haven't done a tutorial video for that yet. Um, what else was going on back then about the Much Afraid era? I don't know. I remember going to see Prince of Egypt and uh, everything in between. I tried to do a tutorial for that, and I don't. Uh, is it? No, it's on the first fret, isn't it? Nope. That's a good song, and then the key, the, the chorus is in a different key, and it was a really good song. I still like that song. Um, it touched me in a personal way. Um, it, the struggle, everything in between, you know, uh, that we all have to deal with. Um, and that was a beautiful movie, and it still is a beautiful movie. Um, it makes the story so personal, Moses and, and Pharaoh, the fact that they're pretty much brothers and that they're at odds with each other. And yeah, as a a really good movie. I own it, and uh, it's good. Um, so, um, but yeah, I think that's about all I have to say about Much Afraid. Um, I it took me. I think it took me a little while to like it, and I did. And um, it took me a little while to get learn those songs, and I did. And um, it helped me grow as a musician and I'm pretty and I appreciate that. Thank you Jars. Thank you Praise Band. Uh thank you everybody who uh, helped me uh with that. Um yeah, that's why the channel can be what it is today and I'm able to produce the videos I can produce is all that combined stuff. So thanks so much.